Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch man, Calder Ness. This is episode 403. We're going to be talking about some more of the realms team building and answer some listener questions. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six yeah. people think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm going to make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dialage for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Like always, joining me in the studio is your Dialage for Hero Clicks champion, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah, I just dropped my mouse. What of it? Always drop my mouse. Ah, we should have done just done a, a compilation of how many times we've dropped the mouse on the live stream. Yeah. Oop, I, oop. I have since I swapped find. out from that mouse because I think I lost the battery and can't find it again. Oh. So I've gone to my rechargeable mouse. Um, that one was weird because it was like the buttons were sideways. I don't know if you noticed it, but like. Yes, they were sideways. Yeah, yeah I didn't like it at all. It was like, like you know, ergonomically fancy kind of thing, but. Uh, Guys. Yeah, it's broke now. So, um, yeah. Well, that is so sad. Can we, uh, can we pour one out for Simeon's, for Simeon's mouse? Uh, all right, Simeon. Hey, what made you happy this last week, my man? You know what made me happy this last week? Made me just over the moon. Uh, there's this game called Marvel Contest of Champions. For oh. like the the Apple, uh, probably Android, oh. all the all of, like the different devices. What's fun about Android and like having a Google uh, account, I guess, is I stopped playing this game, Contest of Champions, probably five years ago. Yeah, and when I log back into my account, all of my champions are still there, and I was like, wow got red hulk i've got juggernaut i've got four stars on all these guys i've got heimdall all these cool combos and stuff and like i played three rounds and i was like oh yeah i hate this game so i immediately (laughs) uninstalled it i was like i forgot how much i just hate the absolute grind that that game is even though there was like some cool characters you could collect and stuff it just gets to be this like real I don't know. Like at a certain point, it's just too much. It's like way too much. And it's, you know, it's a lot like hero clicks, but at the same time, it's way worse because it's just tapping a screen. So, um, it's not at all like hero clicks other than the collection aspect. Yeah. In the collection aspect, it is, man, I, I probably stopped game playing that game around four years ago. Maybe. Yeah. Not quite as long ago as you did, but yeah, I I remember being crazy addicted. It also I don't know if like the game. updates have helped, but it used to just drain batteries like Oh yeah, I don't know. Hopefully. Like I would play up to my like quote unquote like back when I was playing uh fairly often like 5 years ago, um the like quote unquote energy limit that your your team had or whatever cuz games have to like introduce that to either compel you to do microtransactions or just like get off their server so that the people that are willing to do microtransactions can play um i would get through my energy and then my like battery would be like three percent and i was like wow guess it's time to go back to sleep and charge my phone it's just depleted yeah (laughs) but yeah it made it made me happy um seeing like this old game because i really had like the itch i was like i really want to play this seeing it again seeing all the cool characters and stuff and then immediately like being able to uninstall it and not fall back into its dark grasps uh made me happy yeah Yeah. just to like look see what's new see what like weird champion they added which makes no sense at all to the game recently and just be like see all the the mail like messages that you get like the daily messages you would always get so you probably had like 
it was a huge backlog yeah like i had to just clearing the notifications took the bulk of the time that i was like on the app. <laughs> um, yeah i always hated the best? uh what's that i was uh, what's your what was your best champion on there it was like the highest <sighs> um, cp i forget what it was called what the, the, i don't yeah so i was in like the called. mid 2000s was like my best champions uh, okay. Which anyone that like has been playing for a while, like that's probably like nothing to them. Um, but the first big break yeah. I got was Juggernaut, who was my first okay. four star, and he was like twenty two hundred. And I don't know what that means, but like all I know is he had the unstoppable perk, so you could just like instantly you didn't have to worry about blocking or like dashing or anything. You could just instantly go into attacking. And even if your opponent ta- attacked faster, he just like no sold their attack essentially their first couple oh, attacks. Yes. Yeah. So you could like cancel out their combo with your own right off the bat, which was really cool. Um, Heimdall, I don't know what his points is. It's like somewhere around like twenty two hundred as well. His really cool thing was anytime one of your cha- anytime he was on like your squad, and one of your champions was to hit zero, they would instantly pop back up to one and get like unstoppable and immune essentially some some combo of that for like a few seconds so it really helped on boss battles when like your boss would like just completely destroy you but you could build up your special meter like all the way and then once he hit you to that uh heimdall would like semi resurrect you and you could just instantly do your combo and it was cool um yeah, I had I had a pretty decent squad. Nightcrawler was also one of my top ones. Um, Taskmaster was like my fighter. Nightcrawler was my mutant. Heimdall was cosmic. Juggernaut was mystical, and then Red Hulk. Red Hulk was the other one. He was the science one. Um, that was my main squad, apparently, because that was what was loaded in when I started playing again. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, I, I assume probably with like five stars and six stars. They might even have seven stars. Who even knows now? But oh, yeah. Infinite I assume stars. with like all that garbage, yeah, just, they just keep adding more, keep scaling up the power ceiling. I always hate new games like that because they'll have like um, some sort of like monthly or whatever. Like they'll have this big event mm-hmm. and they'll be like, if you rank in like the top whatever and the people that rank in the top, you know, however much are either paying a crazy amount into the game or they've been playing so long that like all their champions are already like ridiculous. So I never have like a chance for like, and this isn't just Marvel contest of champions. This is like any of the games that do this kind of system, which is a lot. Um, Yeah. I just, I never came close to uh, being able to compete with any of that. Yeah. I I know if you were ever in, in an alliance during Christmas, Time. They always did that that gifting event, which was the only way you could get Kang, I believe, who was like one of the main first villains in the story mode of that. So, if you ever wanted to get like Kang as your own champion, you had to either get really lucky and opening a gifting crystal to get you a four star Kang, or you would be a rewarded one, I believe, if your alliance gave the most gifts. And that was just giving gifts to just like each other. That was really the only way to like quote unquote trade in that game was buy each other a gift and hope they got potions or something. I think you can now give each other potions. But anyways, um the top alliances were just people that would spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to buy gifts and stuff for each other and just send yeah. them around. And in like that's like that's how <laughs> you that's how you won that. that's hundreds just, and that, hundreds of dollars. You know, that event more so than the other ones, all of them are like pay to win events. But that one is just quite literally however whoever spends the most units or whatever is send each other and the, the gifts cost 300 units each or something ridiculous like that and like a hundred dollars worth of units was like three thousand or so i think three thousand units or whatever is like the odin's vault so you would spend you would spend whatever a hundred dollars for 10 gifts and like the top alliances would give each other like hundreds of gifts or something it just it was just who could spend the most money you know not th- yeah a lot of those world or month events for that stuff is like just spending money. But yeah, as someone who also wasted a lot of time, and Mobile I will say money, yeah. I, I have probably spent like three hundred dollars on that game. I will not lie. Um, yeah, it's fun to fun to hear other people talk about it. Uh, what made me happy this week cost a lot less time, I guess, 
I just not not that we now that you spent any money, not that you logged in, bought a hundred dollars worth of stuff, and then logged out. But that's a fun trip down memory lane. No, I played sadly with the play that I'm in right now. Uh, my Fridays are taken up, so I cannot play Hero Clicks, which really sucks. But I have just enough time before I have to be at the theater to play a single game of Hero Clicks. This last week, uh, they were doing War of the Realm Sealed. I wasn't gonna buy any War of the Realms to play one game of Sealed and then instantly drop. So I was just like, I'll just play a buy round if there is one. And there was. So I played the buy round. Um, I built a 300 modern age team. And like the whoever I played against was going to win the game anyways. Like I was, they, they were going to get their 150 point buy. So I was, they didn't feel too bad playing against a pre-built team. But the team wasn't like crazy good either. It was, it was a meme team. I ran uh, the swap Captain America at 100 points. Then I ran Steve Rogers making an Avenger the thing from the super rare thing from Fantastic Four. That's the dad thing. And then I played uh, Peggy Carter at 50 points. And then I couldn't find another 50 point Avenger, but I just said, just pretend I've got a 50 point Avenger on the team. So that way the swap makes sense. So I, um, whatever, got in and then I swapped out uh, those characters no way they have to be the same amount of people something like i don't i don't remember how it went but either way i swapped out those characters for three captain americas my team just ended up being three captain americas i might have cheated i i don't know how how the swap totally works i'm not gonna pretend i care how it works at the end of the day you know i i got i had three captain americas on my team and then i had chuck and buzz and then i had uh what's her face becky girl from toughest girl in book on becky barnes um so if i cheated swap it again does not matter because guess what the person won anyways um we were just playing a game to play a game uh so i just had i just had 300 point super rare uh, empire captain americas 33 clicks of damage you got to do to to kill my team Dang. and we were just having fun and then well i mean technically if you want to try to get the pogs out too which were annoying you have to deal uh 36 clicks of damage you know uh, that's, you know, it's outwits or penetrating or whatever to actually chew through all those guys. So uh, I won the game. He he didn't have a bad team, though. He had, like, the rare Captain Marvel. So we did, like, shoot one for four right away. He had one of the Doctor Stranges also on the team. He had Black Widow. He had Miles Spider-Man. He got a little unlucky. I won maps. There wasn't a lot of hindering for him. He did get a little unlucky on Super Senses rolls. Um, and, but, yeah, like, just... Captain America just beating them up. Just play, you know, swap out four Captain Americas. You, the the beta cuck version of this team is when you play two 40-point caps to get rid of both of them and then swap in <laughs> Avengers. The Chad, the, the king version of this team, is swapping into two more Captain Americas to have your three uh, freedom beat squad. And that that is what made me happy was running that team. The, I, I can't wait to run it again. I think it's hilarious. I love that team, so... Yeah, I can't wait to play more of it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think hey, those speaking. kind of teams are pretty fun. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like the simple, I have stuff to do. Uh, and it's like essentially, like I don't have to, I don't have to worry about all your fancy powers and stuff. I'm just going to do XYZ, which is like mostly punch and shoot you kind of thing. I really like that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, definitely, exactly. Nothing fancy, just punching, freedom punch, baby. Love it. All right. Well, we're gonna go over. Speaking of like fun team builds, we're just gonna go over some War of the Realms final thoughts here. We've got to me built a fun four hundred point team. I built a quote unquote competitive three hundred modern team. Um, and we're just uh looking at this set as a whole really quickly before we get into teams. Uh, final thoughts, War of the Realms. Simeon, how much War of the Realms did you buy? Uh, in total, I bought from singles. So I bought uh, six boosters because I did sealed a couple times. And then um, outside of that, I haven't bought any uh, actual sealed product. And then once release hit, I was going to buy a prime uh, wrecker. But cool stuff was sold out like almost immediately as soon as I saw it. So I bought eight of the Lokis and I bought a super rare Doctor Strange because I think I'll actually use those. So 
that's all I bought. Yeah. Pretty, oh, pretty okay. small amount, but, um, there's a few things I'll pick up here and there like over the years, but I did get quite a bit of the common uncommon stuff that I was looking for. I uh, even got some of the rares that I was wanting. So not too bad. Yeah. Okay. Nice. You picked up all those singles at Cool Stuff Inc. I know when we were talking last week on the podcast, you were saying oh, you were refreshing. Waiting yeah. for the, the I was just like, to go up. I was like, man, any moment now. I've been checking. I've been checking, and then yeah, when I, when I finally like started slowing down and wasn't checking as often, that's when like they they dropped them. And so I don't know how long they were up when I finally uh, saw them update, but yeah. I do know that there was a few items already sold out. So right. I had an email because obviously all the items were there, but they weren't in stock. I had an email set up. <laughs> Hopefully it would remind me like an in stock reminder for when the record prime got added. I didn't get an email. I don't think they do that for like uh, when they're not ever been in stock. You know, I don't I think it's only if it's like has been in stock and then is out of stock and they add it to stock. And I was like, all right, fine. Um, but yeah, nice. I bought two boosters of. And after that, I had trade credit with someone. So I got Crusader. And then I did some trades to get two Legacy cards. That same night I bought those boosters, I was able to pull almost everything I wanted, actually. Um, One Captain America, a Scarlet Witch, Shang-Chi, Blade, and then normal Rare Wrecker. And then also that night, I traded for a Baron Zemo. So now I just need Wrecker Prime and the Pile Driver card, which apparently are going to be very expensive because I guess the Pile Driver card is not um, very Easy common. To find, it, yeah, it's it's like one of the first times we've heard of this for like Legacy cards. Like a where Legacy, it's like, card it's legacy card that's just card not is actually rare. Yeah, yeah, not actually uh, being distributed like somewhat equally. Yeah, so we have some unequal distribution, so it might be a little tough. I might hold off. I'm going to hold off on buying any hero clicks until I'm playing again weekly. So I'm not really totally hurting for that stuff. But once we start playing weekly and I play through all my empire stuff, then I'm really going to have to be hurting and looking for uh, what's it called? You know, that pile driver and that record prime. I really cannot wait to play the wrecking crew. Like I said, I love, love they made the wrecking crew. And yeah, so I was able to get everything I need so far. Just that record prime, just that pile driver. If you have a pile driver card and want to do a homie a solid and give him a good bro deal on that pile driver card, hit me up. Let me know. Uh, but all right. So you bought some singles, did some trading, but six boosters overall. I bought some singles, did some trading, two boosters overall. Uh, I mean, we kind of like said our thoughts on this set before. I, I also kind of said my thoughts on this set during the pitch meeting video that came out earlier this week. I think it's a very bland, very boring uh, set, which is a real shame. Um, I might actually, I guess, also end up picking up the Asgardians of the Galaxy, except for Annabelle Riggs, a hater. Um, even if she is actually not as bad as I thought, still a hater. Um, but yeah. Simeon, any any like quick final thoughts? I don't really have much to say. This is just no. it was a really boring set. It was an uh, easy set to skip. I will say yeah. I looking at the sculpt and paint quality that a lot of these, like there's, there's a lot of like minute kind of like paint details and facial details and stuff like that, that are just kind of sloppy. Um, going through like the, the images that we can see where like paint is like bleeding through, like this enchantress has like green in her armpit because obviously like her base color was green and then they tried to paint like flesh color over it. So just like the weird sloppy stuff like that. I really hope that the, like the rumor mill of this set being kind of like not necessarily phoned in, but like outsourced to another something or other like outsourced so that Disney plus could get um, like the proper attention that it deserved and also be released on time. I hope that rumor is true because if this is the the bigger sculpt, more dynamic sculpts that we're paying extra for, and Disney Plus starts looking like this on like release, and they're asking what like seventeen MSRP, it's gonna be rough because like I've never seen a set with as splotchy paint. Like I should say, I've never seen a modern set. Uh, it's like since we've been doing this podcast, I haven't seen like a modern set which with as easily splotchy like telltale signs of like bad paint job kind of stuff 
Um, all of the bases, I, I we said this during the set review, but all of the bases were just like bland color rocks. And then yeah. the paint color of the base often creeps up onto the sculpt. So it's not like the base was painted and then they placed the sculpt on it. It's like it was all done and then they painted it and didn't even bother like keeping the paint on the just the base. So like the Destroyer Arden, Destroyer Odin armor, whatever, um, I guess it's like Iron Man armor, Odin, uh, his little purple flight, like repulsor stuff, magic repulsor things has like brown all over it because it's on the base Ugh. and it's just, that's a super rare and it's like a really cool sculpt, but man, it looks like the, like a lot of the paint got phoned in. Uh, and hopefully that's just because the next set is going to really knock it out of the park. So that's all I have to say. Uh, I've said my piece on the set. I think there's some cool stuff to pick up in it. Um, I think it's got one of the stronger sets of legacy cards that we've seen. Um, and it's, it's neat, but that being said, there's not a whole lot keeping me interested in it beyond that. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just yikes, man. Terrible. I don't, I mean, like you said, hopefully this just means that Disney plus is that much better. So that way they could just make this set so terrible or something, but it, it really is a shame seeing the, the garbage, garbage paint. Yeah, there's there's really not much I I have to say on this set. So, uh, do you want to jump into your team first, or you want me to jump into like the yeah. team? So, I built a 400 point, uh, kind of like silvery esque kind of team, but it's all out of War of the Realm, so it's it's Ooh. not silver at all. Um, but it it feels more at home in like a silver kind of build than in like a modern 300 kind of build. So. I started off, first of all, the it's a mystical theme team. So, of course, I started off with the Lokis, the almost generic that we got in the set. So, I've got one 50-point Loki, and then I've got five 10-point... Or wait, let's see. Let me double count. Yeah, five 10-point Lokis. So, I've got a total of 100 points of Loki. Now, obviously, this could be ah. easily... This is, I'll, I'll tell you how this team could easily be turned into a 300-point team later. Um but this gives me the action total of plus two with one Loki to spare. So if I lose one, I don't automatically drop down to a plus one. Uh, but yeah, the Loki, the main Loki, obviously, uh, starts with stealth, super senses, prob, 10 for three, six range, one lightning bolt, flight, mystics team ability. Uh, the main Loki then goes to sidestep outwit ESD with 11 for two. And then all of the 10-point Lokis just have that original standard stat that I listed at the top. Uh, it's pretty basic. If you've played or seen Dr. Fates or just looked at this Loki, you know how it works. Um, it's cool. It doesn't require leadership and gives you a plus two action total, which is pretty big for a kind of swarmy team like this. Uh, I think having a bunch of 10-point pieces that are... Six range, 10 for three is pretty solid with all the prob that they have, even if they can't really position themselves. Uh, yeah. In order to move all of those characters, I added the 30-point Scarlet Witch, the rare from this set. So I think she... No, she's a common. Jeez. Uh, the common Scarlet Witch, 004. Um, so she has the flight power, what I must do, I can't do on my own, phasing teleport, passenger three, but only to carry characters that share a keyword with her, so everyone on this team will be able to be carried by her. She also has prob, she has four range, one lightning bolt, Avengers team ability, so she can move 11 while carrying, and then she also has TK, which can be important for rearranging some people. Uh, getting into like some bigger bruisers in this team, I have Donald Blake, which is the uncommon 030. Uh, he has charge quake up top with uh, impervious, and then he's got triple lightning bolts. He has the one trait that is when he makes a close attack, hits, uh, his targets can't use defense powers. So it doesn't matter what kind of attack he's doing. It's just, you know, anytime he targets somebody, they can't use defense powers. It's pretty solid. He only does three damage. Um, there's no way on this team to boost damage, but there is a pretty decent amount of prob to make sure that he hits and then on his bottom dial he's got flurry blades 
with two damage so you might as well roll that blades at that point and it's pretty solid uh for 90 points he's probably going to have a little bit more longevity just because of the sheer amount of uh prob on this team and then yeah positioning, definitely. yeah positioning won't be a <laughs> problem and he's got that cosmic energy to keep himself untoken so yeah. he's the big bruiser of the group but um, we've got a couple other main attackers or side attackers, tertiary attackers. So the rare Moon Knight, 03, uh, I guess, yeah, 032, 32, uh, if you want to speak in normal numerical values. Uh, Moon Knight, 70 points. He's got the team player ability. So you can pull so far the Avengers team ability from this team. Um, He's got running shot top dial with an 11 for 3, 5 range, triple lightning bolt. Uh, he's got improved movement for elevated. Then he's got a trait that is there isn't a hit he wouldn't rather take. When Moon Knight takes damage from an opposing character, opposing character's attack, give him a vengeance token. At the beginning of your turn, you may remove two vengeance tokens. If you do, modify Moon Knight's combat values plus one until your next turn. Uh, that goes great with his traded, or not traded, but his... Uh, almost full dial clicks two through seven uh special attack power that is blades claws fangs quake steel energy uh when one or more opposing characters take damage from moon knight's attack give him a vengeance token so essentially you want him to be hit onto one of those clicks so you can start doing that kind of stuff it combos a lot better with his charge than it does his top dial running shot but he's no slouch in either department so that's pretty solid and then rounding out the team as far as attackers go is um, the common blade who has charge blades and then goes into a flurry, uh, three damage his whole dial. And then, of course, he has the rally six, which is for opposing attack rolls. Steel energy, when he would be KO'd by an opposing character, you may instead remove one of his rally dies. And if you do, put turn him to click six, protected pulse wave. So blade's the one that you probably throw out with like Moon Knight right off the bat, they're the ones that you want to take yeah. damage out of everyone else. Um, the Lokis can kind of supplement how much damage, depending on like line of fire and stuff. And then rounding out the team is the only super rare that is on this team. And that is the 050 Doctor Strange that I just really like. Eight range, one lightning bolt. He's got flight, phasing, energy, sh or yeah, energy shield deflection and energy explosion top dial along with another prob. So I don't know if you're keeping track, but this team has uh, eight props. Is that right? Eight props. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. For uh, that's not even the bulk of like the point value is just uh, it's nuts. But uh, the big thing about this Doctor Strange is he's got the recruiter trait. So you can add a mystical keyword to the sideline to come in for any of these characters that would be KO'd it just has to be less points than the KO'd character. So if you can find someone less points than a 10 point Loki, then you can bring them in. Otherwise you've got Scarlet, Witch, Moon Knight, blade, uh, Donald Blake, uh, and the 50 point Loki, I suppose like all of those are figures that you could bring stuff in for. Um, and even bigger than that for me is the other trait where for free, once per turn for all characters with this trait, choose a friendly character with the mystical keyword. This turn, when the chosen character attacks after resolutions, deal a hit character one penetrating damage. So that means when Moon Knight does like his charge, blades, quake, whatever, or Donald Blake is like flurrying on his down dial, um, or even like Blade has flurry down dial, or even when like one of the Lokis just shoots 10 for three. You can potentially do, like, if you hit, you can potentially deal uh, one pen damage afterwards, which is nothing. It's it, it's not for nothing. <laughs> it is something, is what I mean. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. definitely something. Um, it's not as crazy as what you can do with, like, Wendigos and stuff, but on this team, you just have so much, uh, like, so much offensive output. Um, you have five actions. I didn't add any leadership anywhere in this team, but... For five actions, you should roughly get five attacks per turn, depending on you know your positioning and stuff like that, where you carry everybody to. Um, the yeah. Lokis all have flight, so all the 10-point Lokis can also carry. Uh, and depending on map and everything like that, yeah, the Doctor Strange might not have to ever engage, but for 50 points, he can add quite a bit of damage output to the team.
Okay, nice. I like the team. Sweet. Oh, he also has I mean, defenders, so Blade and uh, Moon Knight can copy Knight, the yeah. defenders. So let's see. Do, Moon Knight has an it? 18. Blade has an 18. Doctor Strange, ah, also an 18. Ah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, You'll definitely it. have an 18 somewhere in your dial. Thank you. Very cool. Uh, thank you, guys. I really appreciate that. That really uh, <laughs> means so much to me. Oh, boy. <laughs> but, you know, hey, it's it's not nothing. Sometimes, eventually, yeah. they'll be able when to Moon use Knight it. When Moon Knight hits that 17 combat reflexes and you defend an 18 onto that, and then your opponent, oh, yeah. you know, misses by one, you'll be like, yeah, I did that on purpose. Oh, yeah. We did it, boys. Uh, all right, right on. Uh, my team... Well, first, I'll just really quick go through my casual team that I think is just sort of casual fun, and then I'll, I'll show you my quote-unquote competitive team. Uh, this team is going to be Crusader. She can either be at 125 or 75. You just have to get rid of a different character on the team. So, uh, And then Crusader with her dad, Captain America, from Avengers Fantastic Four Empire at 100 points. So if she's at the 125... Then we only have 75 points left, which is perfect for the Soldier Keyworded Prime, Josiah X, which lets them reduce penetrating damage, which is awesome because they share a keyword. And then last 25 points, I was thinking the Galactus Herald Dial to either give Josiah X protected outwit or either Captain America or Crusader protected outwit. Uh, so then Crusader has 10 clicks of life, Cap has 11. They both lead with Impervious, which reduces penetrating damage. Uh, and then Josiah X, he himself has six clicks of life. So just it's just fun. It's just a fun little long dial, long long life team, which is cool. And then Crusader can carry Cap and all that jazz. Uh, or you can drop Crusader down to 75 and put Green Lantern uh, from Wonder Woman on your team. So you can taxi everybody up. And you've got a running shot pen blast, which will go great with Captain America's uh, or sorry, enhancement. Excuse me. Uh, and then, of course, you know, he'll give everybody ESD, even though Crusader can already choose it and all that jazz. But there's just like a fun little soldier team for anybody that cares. And then uh, a quote unquote competitive team, which has a uh, War of the Realms character on the sideline. Uh, Simi and I were going back and forth quite a bit this week, working around Wrecker and everything. Um, and, you know, we both had some really good ideas. And I think this takes a few from each. I think, yeah, I think it's cool. So we start with Wizard. So Wizard is our in place of Wrecker right now. Simeon had this idea where uh, he has this trait. Beginning of the game, you may replace up to four friendly characters with the same number of characters from your sideline on their starting clicks. All replacement characters must have the 5 for 4 keyword and different names. Total points, blah, 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 can't exceed. So yeah. Wizard is 75. A couple weeks ago, um, yeah. I can't remember if it was episode 401 or what, uh, I actually like that previous Thursday had ran a fantastic uh, or frightful four frightful four, yeah. frightful four swap team. So it was pretty, pretty fun Fresh. when uh prime wrecker had frightful four and was also 75 points, which <laughs> happens to be the main frightful four squad right. number. Yeah, so, they're yeah. All, yeah. It's a pretty easy swap. Yep. One for so one swap, you know, sw get rid of wizard, put on the wrecker. And then this is a wrecker team. So we have, uh, Molecule Man, scientist theme team. This just lets Wrecker be on a scientist theme team. And then we have Leonardo de Venom to make it a Spider Man family theme team. So then we have Molecule Man. We have Dr. Claire Finn, mostly for Yafit. I think it is a good idea to have the Yafit Pog here to give the other two members of the Wrecking Crew sidesteps. So that way, none of the Wrecking Crew actually takes up any of your actions. And you can use all those actions for a beautiful, beautiful barrier. <laughs> uh, as the good Lord intended. And then. Yeah, so Clearfin, Molecule Man, Wrecker, for her being able to spit out free barrier, and then eventually throughout the game, she'll do normal barrier. Leonardo de Venom, like I said, man, I wish this guy was 45 or 50 points. It, it's a hefty 60 points to get two Marvellas on the team. So, yeah, they're made, you know, I, I don't really want to play around with the idea of this team not being themed, though, because I, I think they need to try to win map as best they can. This is a nine plus theme team, which I th is pretty solid nowadays, but also kind of mid tier because that's sort of what theme teams are all kind of high now. So uh, Leonardo, then we have two Marvellas. 
Dr. Aaliyah Gregor, she's purely here. I mean, she's another leadership, which is nice to get uh, tokens off of our barrier folk. And then she is also, uh, whatever, stealth, which can help block line of fire, all that jazz. But she has a unique modifier where friendly bystanders within five squares modify their combat values plus one. Um, if we're not attacking, at the very least, this gives all the wrecking crew bystanders plus one defense, which is really, really nice. Right. And then if we are attacking, that just lets us have really, really good values. Because even if they aren't just trying to win off mission points here, you know, we give Bulldozer plus one. You know, he's an 11 for four. Uh, same thing. With Pile Driver, he becomes an 11 for four. Thunderball becomes a 10 for three. You know, but they all get a 19 defense. Oh, except for Bulldozer. Excuse me. He only has 17. But he gets an 18 defense at least. You know, we do at least, again, have a perplex from Leonardo the Venom. All that stuff. I mean... Plus two Marvellas and all that in power. If we wanted to, this team could also just hit you really freaking hard. It can go, you know, across the map, drop Pile Driver there, and he can flurry. He'll be, you know, an 11 for six damage uh, with two empowers and then Masters of Evil down your defense and stuff. So it can, it, this team can hit really hard no matter what and then also still win off mission points. So Double Marvella, Aaliyah Gregor, and then Ultra Humanite. I did like Simeon's idea. I think just having a TK is just pretty important, just to have some TK on this team. So Ultra Humanite, I think, is just a nice scientist filler. TK, sidestep. He can mind control and stuff through the the blocking, maybe move other people out of the way, uh, or have your, you know, another way to, like, attack your opponent without attacking your opponent, which is cool, which is nice. You know, uh, Injustice League is okay. It's not crazy, but it's okay, you know. If it hits. And then, I mean, if it hits, it potentially... It Potentially, uh, in the rare circumstances, save, save your life. Yeah, but yeah, and then uh, five points left. Figured might as well just toss zero ring on there. Give that. I would assume give that to Doctor Lee Gregor. She has willpower. She to, uh, potentially keep using barrier. So yeah, pretty basic, pretty basic team. I mean, it's a mission point team. So like a lot of mission point teams that work off this kind of stuff. Um, and by a lot, I mean Aries, and then this one. You kind of need Barrier uh, to stay safe because you're really playing the game against yourself, and you just don't want to interact with your opponent at all with this team. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but it, it's, you know, if you pop out What's-His-Face, you pop out um, Thunderball right away, you can get two mission points first turn. Yeah, with without guys taking Wrecker, an action Thunderball. with Wrecker or, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, really, you could get two mission points no matter what, as long as we have Claire Finn. But if you don't want to have Claire Finn, and then you only have, for the rest of the game, though, you only have two actions for Costa Barrier, which is just, why not have four actions of Costa Barrier or three actions of Costa Barrier? Um, because you're going to have to destroy some anyways and then whatever else. So I think this is fun. I think it's a solid team. I would really like to try it out, see how well it does. Obviously, map choice is huge. And then barrier placement is also huge. Stuff like, you know, making sure you're on an indoor map. Make sure you have, you know, I think it's that first or second turn where you're just going off of the free molecule man barrier and then the free zero and teen lantern barrier. That can be pretty huge depending on, like, what map you're on. So that that first turn is going to be the toughest. Um, but again... Still, the Marvellas have sidestep. There's a lot of sidestep on the team. You can slowly get up there, but to get mission points up, I think the first turn is your riskiest turn with this team still. But it's fun. I think it'll be a fun competitive team. I think it could work. I don't know if it's the most, whatever you would call it, uh, meta, most effective version of this team you could possibly no. make. It's, it's just, I think, fun. So I, I think it's a cool way. Cool I idea think to around. while it is like one of the more likely mission points to be usable and like take off and like other people yeah. will probably build off of like similar ideas um obviously frightful force swap is not like unknown it's a pretty i mean if you're looking at prime record you're going to look at like his three <laughs> i think it's three keywords uh what is it brute yeah. um brute, masters frightful of evil, Four, and frightful of evil. Four. Yeah. yeah uh so if you're looking at wrecker at all to build with you're looking at those already and then you'll stumble ac across the wizard and in instantly have like that idea um no i think uh the marvellas is the best route to go and i guess 
going off of theme is also a potential. Like I, I did originally build a off theme, just like whatever kind of build. Um, but like Calder said, winning map is important because that first turn is probably like the roughest one for this team. Uh, having blocking like a good map with blocking already printed and then also just being able to go first and not necessarily have to worry about your opponent like being able to get through multiple barriers in one turn is probably the biggest thing because not only do you have to put up enough barrier where you can destroy it and still be safe you have to put up enough barrier where you can destroy it still be safe and your opponent can't like shoot through one like square and get to you Uh, because if they can start taking out you know like marvellas or something then your barrier goes away and then it's a lot harder you have to switch to like an offensive kind of build which like you said this team is no slouch when it comes to damage output and like absolutely not the masters of evil being able to decrease combat values you can really like do some you can do some damage uh pretty easily for a pog generator it's a pretty cheap piece and then the mission points on top are just kind of a fun task to try see yeah no it's it's dope it's dope i think and you know this is also a team and if you want to kind of play it like relatively like quote unquote casually you can you know switch up the play styles get wrecker and leonardo the venom up there punching doing all that fun stuff and then yeah have fun team but yeah i think you know Stuff like that. This is all team I'll try. Crusader team I'll try. And then like a Masters of Evil team with whenever I can get all the legacy Masters of Evil plus normal Wrecker with them on a team. And then whatever filler points. I think that Baron Zemo is like almost guaranteed just to, yeah, do like the legacy Wrecking Crew, the rare Wrecker, then the rare Baron Zemo at 35 for an even 300 point team would be kind of fun as well. But yeah, that is... War of the Realms, if you want, you know, we talked a lot about bystanders episode. If you want all the War of the Realm bystanders, that is like the Wrecking Crew, Lurker, Dreamstone, Simulacrum, the Draugar Warrior, uh, all that jazz, the Rock Troll. We have teamed up with Dark Logos, a.k.a. Starting Over Podcast, a.k.a. Edward Shelton, uh, to make <laughs> some bystanders. We use some of his ideas, some of our ideas. Uh, pictures of ourselves so if you want to get these bystanders in march we will have them by march 10th so if you join the pot the patreon in march you'll be able to choose these bystanders i will be making up a post later today that is a patreon exclusive post but i'll probably post them on facebook and twitter to show you guys all the upcoming bystanders that are coming your way but they're really really cool you know if you're tired of just random comic book art or whatever we have some we have some goofy fun ideas for these bystanders some of them are cheap you know uh 20 minute cosplays that take that you know to get together some of them are random things we think are funny uh for mr horse i used uh one of the horses on my ranch that i think is fun he's a paint horse his name is paint i know i'm so creative so incredibly smart uh and so like if you want like pictures like that, that or star funny. You can star. only you can yeah. only name a horse two things paint that's star. Right. Um, nope, that's it. Two things. Yep. Why would you say that? <laughs> Why would you do? That? So, so brave, but so true. You're a scumbag. You're the worst. <laughs> All right. Anyways. Anyways, yeah. Ch- you check out those bystanders. You'll see them on social media here soon. Let's go ahead and get into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Uh, before we get into a big bunch of listener questions, we have uh, some from Patreon really quickly on the Discord. Uh, Mandalore McCall, question for this show is Kenny, so Kenny Pena, actually a Hydra LMD sent to infiltrate WizKids? Ooh. Maybe. Big if true. Maybe. Big yeah. if true. Big uh, if true. <laughs> Council still out I will on that say one. Kenny did post, there is a there is a post in like Heroclix trade something or hero clicks international i don't know speak about stuff thing one of the facebook groups somebody had private messaged whiz kids or like you know just facebook messengered whiz kids and kenny said like something along the lines of i am always of the thought that it's it never hurts to ask questions and i so badly wanted to reply to him and be like 
Where's Wave Two? <laughs> yes, I so badly yes! wanted to. Like, nah. Yes, uh, it just would have been funny because it never hurts to ask questions. Oh, really? Well, then, where's Wave Two? Um, but uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Life model decoy Kenny. That would um, that would mean that there is a real Kenny out there somewhere that isn't already infiltrating WizKids. So real Kenny if a life dolphin. model decoy of Kenny, perhaps one of the dolphins drowned the real Kenny, created a life model decoy, and sent it to infiltrate WizKids to make the dolphin symbol better. Oh my gosh, we've cracked the code. What? WizKids code ten nine 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 seven says No. That's that might be a joke that only I get because I've rewatched that section yeah, of episode four hundred too many times. Yeah, it's you. It's all it's all you, man. Um, but we had some Malcolm Rush questions here to answer really quick. It's about it's about generics. Uh, first question: best, worst, and favorite generic Heroclix figures. I said best is Doombot from Fantastic Four. I said worst is the new Boy Legion. And then my favorite is the Zombie Scroll. Okay. Oh yeah, that's pretty. As far yeah. as generics go, that's yeah. Um, I went for best. I went with Hellfire Club Guard and Sentinels. Those are like, I mean, I pretty much only have like modern stuff in mind because the point cost and stuff. When you're talking about the best, they're just they're cheaper and they do more. Um, worst, I went with the DMA agent because. Outside of the police team ability, just so bad compared to the rest of the generics in that set. And then uh, the Mighty Thor Warrior Soul generic, which, granted, the Hella from that set generated a bystander with the exact same stats for zero points. That Warrior Soul was, like, way too overcosted. It was phasing blades and, like, super senses. That warrior soul was so overcosted, nobody actually used it as a bystander. Uh, really? And then my favorite yeah. would have to be either like the World Breakers from uh, Secret Wars Battleworld, the Industrial Spies, I think Ooh. I've gotten a ton of play out of, and Cardinal for lack of point value is kind of skewed on Cardinal, but playing a couple of them is pretty fun. Okay. Nice. Nice. And then the second question is, ooh, what makes a good or great generic hero clicks figure style? Um, so I said cheap. I think keeping it under 40 points, so 30-ish or less than 10 to 15 points being that is the resistance point value. Uh, I think a short dial. I don't think a generic needs to have a long dial. I think three Heck, even two clicks, if they do what they do well, yeah. is totally fine with me. And then a solid power set. Bulloids, sidestep, stealth, and power. Awesome. They do their yeah. thing well. Doombots, running shot, energy explosion, ESD, flight, special thing. Awesome power set. You know, some form of movement attack, I think some form of either sidestep, running shot, or charge is big. Um, when a generic just has stealth and they have to just waste move actions getting close, that's bad. Like, when a generic <clears> is <throat> just... Brood. brood. Yeah, brood. If they have just <laughs> leap climb or just stealth or just phasing, that makes a pretty bad generic. Yeah. But that's what I think. Yeah. I went along with a lot of that. So low point cost. Um, I think, you know, generics are best played in swarms. As much as I want like big beefy um like parademon kind of like style dudes, uh at the same time, they don't make great generics because I don't play like huge games where it makes sense to play them, and also they don't usually get like powered well when they they have that higher dial. So I like the low point cost, shorter dial, uh, specific utility. I like when a generic has like something very unique to it, like Hellfire Club Guards have running shot Pensai, which on its surface is great, but then they have the utility of uh, like Blackheart, switching them to that other click, which is my, my last point for generics, is a good leader, whether it's someone who brings the generic in or just someone who works well with them. Um, like Baron Zemo, the superior foes, Baron Zemo, that gave 
plus one attack and sidestep to oh, all yes. Masters of Evil. Stuff like that, <laughs> where there wasn't any generics for that Baron Zemo, but like something like that, um, characters that can just generate bystanders, uh, or not bystanders, but generics, um, stuff like that is like really fun, really cool. Uh, if the Wonder Woman Ares had generated the bystanders instead of, or <laughs> generated the uh, generics instead of the bystanders, so if instead of bystander tokens, you would have gotten like actual generics from that set, um, which you essentially do, but like you would have gotten the sidekick stuff. I think that Ares would have been way better just because you would have had a longer dial like amount of figures. Uh, but yeah, low point cost and make sure they do one thing really well, whether that one thing is just like charge blades or you know whatever just make sure like they do something that's interesting enough that i want to have multiples yes definitely 100 percent. that's what we're talking about. that's what i'm talking about that's what i'm waiting for all right next up uh number four which generic hero clicks do you oh sorry number three which generic hero clicks do you have the most of and about how many do you have uh, I believe this is the one I have the most of. It might honestly be Gunslingers at this point, but I think I this is the one I counted anyways. I have 26 Skeletons from the Undead set. Nice. And then if we count it, I have 14 Skeleton Champions uh, for a nice even uh, 40 Skeleton people overall. Why do I like the Skeletons? Here's why. Because if any part of them breaks... It's thematic, so I don't. <laughs> I I uh, I noticed one time I I dropped one and it's like arm broke off and I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, um, in that end, I really want to play a like Evil Dead themed game where I've got like Arthur's Castle and then like a bunch of Templars or knights. I think Templars are only knight type generic, but a bunch of them, and then, like, some custom Ash Williams figure, and then a bunch of these skeletons against them, and I think that'd be a really fun game, but the most I have is skeletons, and I have 26. Simeon. Yeah, so, I've collected generics since I started playing this game, and I have a lot of random stuff. I, I also have a lot of Templars, I have a lot of undead, um, but the, the generic that I went the most overboard on, because I just, I don't know what reason I had, but I just vastly overestimated how many I would need or use. That would be the uh, Rise and Fall Sentinels, the 20-point oh. Sentinel that could be sidelined. Um, before I realized like it was in-cap and like not super solid on damage dealing and stuff, I really wanted to do like a swarm team with Sentinels and Master Mold and stuff like that. Uh, I at one point ordered and pulled because I pulled a lot of like from that set. Um, but at one point I had over 70. So I have since liquidated what? most of oh those my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, at one point I had about 70. At this point, I think I still have about 40. And I'm trying to get down to like 15. So I still think. There's some part of me that's like maybe you'll pay you'll play 300 points of Sentinels at some point. I probably won't ever, but a small part of me holds hope for that. So I think if I can get down to 15, I'll be good. But yeah, that's definitely the one that I collected way too many of. Um, and even though it doesn't count, I also collected a ton of like Jamie Madrix, Multiple Man. Uh, like all of those different ones throughout the years, I've collected way too many of those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's generic. But some of them work together, some don't work together. So that one's that one's okay. That one's okay. Uh number four, which generic hero clicks do you want more of and why? Uh kind of what I sort of said before. I want more Templars or just kind of knight characters. Those were always my favorite movies kind of growing up, and also my favorite uh Lego sets growing up. Knights Kingdom, solid banger, straight banger Lego sets. Um, but yeah, all of our Templars are just like bow and arrow dudes. I would like a few sword and shield type dudes, you know, and then, or, you know, generic knights or Templars. Either one is totally fine. Sounds like you want Mage Knight Resurrection. (laughs) No, no. (laughs) But to be honest, like, Uh, if I had, if I had Templars and I had 
like the ranged archers, the artillery units, the cavalry, the sword dudes, yes, and then cool. like the like leader slash like some sort of cleric kind of thing. Uh, that would be neat. And even though it doesn't work quite in like the Marvel DC kind of context, we could easily do a ge- another generic like rest in peace undead like whatever. Yeah. You could just and call it has... army set or something, right, and just have. Something random like army units I mean, throughout the ages you could do you could do another undead but also have it be like like you said um you know knights and templars they fight skeletons and stuff you could have it be the village people that fought frankenstein you know pitchfork mob mentality whatever right yeah, vampire YMCA, hunter that kind of stuff why yes yeah, of course uh <laughs> vampire hunters like you could do you could have a human sub theme in another undead set yeah uh, and That'd do a really full cool. five figure booster set for sure. Like you could easily, easily fill out a five figure booster set. Um, I think it was only said in the discord, but I absolutely wish that uh, undead was like a five figure booster so that the chase theme yeah. could have been like dead presidents. So like yes. it would have just oh, been yes. ghost of Abraham Lincoln, but we could have got like Washington. We could have got like a uh, oh, man. What would have been, what would have been something cool for Washington? I would like, like all, like ice uh, walker you crossing the delaware yeah, yeah cross the like, delaware yes. we've got ghost of abraham lincoln cinephile abraham lincoln <laughs> um, oh, that's messed up. let's see uh up. bathtub taft i don't know yeah that's, I, I don't know anyhow you're, uh, you're gonna be like a, a full parade, set of like parade john kennedy like, <laughs> geez, <dude. laughs> we could have got yeah green base john kennedy um <laughs> We could have got uh, Teddy on like horse. We could have got, I mean, yeah, I'd yeah, just cool a ton that. of stuff. Zombie, and zombie it would have been, it's all like, you know, uh, what do you call it? Ah, Royalty for Mount Rushmore, an entire like full Mount Rushmore team. Sure. I'd be, I'd be down for that. Anyways. Even ah. though that's the other Dakota. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think, think um, so. those are pretty solid. Uh, generic, I would want more of. Yeah. Uh, if it's one that's actually made and I have some of, I would like more of the two by two Sentinels. Uh, they are oh, way sure. too expensive and not worth having more than what I have of, but they're a lot of fun. They're like, they're surprisingly fun to run scenarios with and stuff. And then they're really cool. Uh, if you're just talking about generic hero clicks that like, aren't really like, I don't have a ton of, um, I'd really like some more Marvel villains or DC like generic villains, like just, you know, two face thugs, that kind of stuff. The hired flunkies weren't too bad, but like, I'd really like to see them on like a base where they have like three clicks. So I can't just poison them and they're gone kind of thing. Exactly. We got to have some, some sticking around. They can't just be like deleted, Uh, not by poison. That's just the worst. Yeah, you um, can't poison regular men. That's insane. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah, um, where we at? Uh, yeah, which generic hero host do you want WizKids to make for the first time or remake in the near future? So, for the first time, I want them to make knights. I just want, I just like, I've, I've said this about a million times. I want generic knights. Uh, I guess the one, so I mean, that means I misunderstood the question. That is, what do I want more of? Uh, it's okay. Uh, I want generic knights, and then if they want to, if they want to remake one, it's got to be the samuroid. I need cheap, better samuroids. I need samuroids that are better. The samuroids are good, but they they can be better. That's all I want. That's all I want in this world. I want in this life, some samuroids. What about you, Simeon? What do you what do you want them to uh, to make? Oh, uh, wait, what else? Number five. What do you want them to make for the first time? Oh yeah, also flag smashers. So. Uh, Flag Smashers slash the Ultimated People from Disney Plus, and then I want them to make the Watch Dogs. I've never made a Watch Dog generic. Watch Dogs are pretty important, pretty integral to several old Captain America storylines. So, the group of like Watch Dogs, which I believe are maybe similar to the Sons of the Serpent, sort uh, sort of, but not really. But they they look different. So I want Watch Dogs. So I, I would like some Watch Dog generics uh, for them to make. Hmm. My generic that I I want new ones of um i want some new hand ninjas so hand ninjas are featured prominently in like marvel comics and sometimes they're more powerful sometimes they're not calder i sent you an image of the knights of tier nog nig or tier tier 
what is it? I love it. Tier Nanog. I don't know what it is. Love it. They're like essentially hey. Power Rangers that were knights. The, that the is gray what they suit had like, like rock powers and then wind powers, fire powers, right. and water powers. Uh, it was Avatar before Avatar, and right. they were knights. Uh, really it. cool show. Really cool show. All season and, and a half of it. Um, the no, the hand ninjas Ooh. like vary in power level depending on like the rider, but they're always like just great fodder for whoever is running them so it's like you know whether it is some big bad like whatever guy like yeah a silver samurai or whoever uh they have like a bunch of hand ninjas and i just want more figures where i can um mastermind to them i can get like bonuses i can do like cool stuff like just you know especially figures that benefit from being grouped up is really cool. Oh yeah. Especially if they look like this. They're absolutely dripping like this, man. <sighs> <laughs> what a look. Oh jeez. Uh all I had right. a friend growing up that had all of those toys. Why they had toys? I mean of course they have oh, toys. Of course a show they like have toys. a show That's like the this only reason to make the show. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That guy's um, got a trident. How the hell would they keep I guess water. Yeah, water. <laughs> water guy. All right, uh, number six. What type of dial design would you want for the answer to question five? Uh, so for like flag smashers from like Captain Winter Soldier, which I mean they're gonna make them, but like charge and power, toughness. I wouldn't. I know they're supposed to be super soldier people. They don't have to be that dang tough though. They really don't. Um, I think charge and power, super strength would be fine. I'd allow it, but they should maybe be on the higher end of generics because they do give Sam and Bucky a really tough time. So I think. That Flag Smasher should be actually like 45 to 30, 30 to 40, or even 45 to 50 point generics. I would be okay with that. Um, and then for Watchdogs, I just said, I don't know, maybe just like a newer version of Sons of the Serpent. Watchdogs are kind of terrible people. Uh, they're pretty, they're pretty bad. Like, they're pretty bad. <laughs> uh, like, ideology is bad. Um so they'd be in line with Sons of the Serpent. If you know anything about the Sons of the Serpent, that would be that would be their sort of thing. So that would that's kind of I guess what I would want for Watch Dogs. Uh, but what about you, Simeon? What do you want the dial design to look like for your generics? Uh, so if I'm going with hand ninjas, um, I'd want it to be similar to the Assassin's Guild. So if you remember, the Assassin's Guild had some sort of like uber stealth trait. I should have pulled it up because um, for I think twenty five points. Let me double check here. Uh, the Assassin's Guild. Man, what set was that in? That was in uh, that was in XDPS. So yeah, the Assassin's Guild had a trait that was appear as part of the background stealth, and then if Assassin's Guild is adjacent to hindering and it's not your turn, lines of fire drawn to it are blocked. So anytime Ooh. it was your opponent's turn. If they were adjacent to hindering, line of fire to them was just blocked, which was pretty crazy. That's pretty good. Um, I want a trait similar to that for the hand ninjas because I think that's solid. And then also um, some sort of co-opt thing because I really like the trait from uh, the ninjas and Batman the Animated Series where they could pick a... Um, they could pick a standard power listed on like the card... And all of them could use that. So the ninja from Batman the Animated Series was stealth at the beginning of your turn for all characters with this trait. Choose a standard power ninja has printed on this card. This turn, all friendly Batman the Animated Series number 010 ninja and ninja bystanders can use that power. So they didn't have a ton of powers to choose from. It was charge, sidestep, leap climb, blades, super senses, exploit, and precision strike. But... For 25 points, it gave you everything you needed. So if you had some top dial ninjas that needed to move over hindering or elevated terrain at the time, you could pick leap climb, and then they could do both. Um, if you needed to get through reducers, like exploit or use your exploit to get through impervious or invuln or whatever. Uh, if they had like super senses and you wanted to use your precision strike with like blades, I mean, it just had a ton of utility. And I really liked that trait. So something that combined those two 
obviously I don't know how you would point cost that because we're talking about two 25 point costed figures and I would yeah. like to see it. Yeah. I would like to see it 25 points for both. Um, but man, those power would creep. be some <laughs> power creep. crazy generics if they could do yeah. both those things. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, the elements of a ninja being able to pick certain powers, use standard powers that they already have access to, just not necessarily on that dial. Um, I also used the sidestep option a lot to, like, extend the reach of their charge. So that was pretty good. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Very nice. All right. Number seven is going to be what set do you think is good for new players? Get generics out of. So if you're a new player, you're probably going to want to do some modern stuff. I think the best two sets in modern for generics... I say they have to go to the first Fantastic Four set, and then, of course, Wonder Woman 80th Anniversary. And then, you know, for Golden Age slash Silver Age Undead set is what I would recommend. Yeah, I I have to reiterate that same exact thing, because that's probably the best generics that we've had in quite a while. And then number eight, since players sometimes get so many generic hero clicks, you know, what's a unique way that you've gotten rid of yours? Uh, you know, not really unique, but we I have a guy in my area who just will buy any and all generics at all. He is just constantly army building for literally anything. I could give that boy, give that dude, um, con artists and newsboy legion or something, you know, something super old, super ancient. He would still give me trade credit or do a little trade or something with me, which is cool. So, uh, Isaac, Isaac Dinky, if you're in the Sioux Falls area, you can give your generics to him. If not, I will, you know, I'll sell them to Cool Stuff Inc. Normally when I try to move bulk mass hero clicks, I always sell my stuff to Cool Stuff Inc. They have a very easy, very nice website system to do a hero clicks buy list. And so it's really, it's honestly, it makes my day when I get to sort through stuff and sell to them because it's just fun clicking through, seeing what the prices are. Of course, it's not going to be full cost because that's just, it's just sort of like, it's not as bad as selling to GameStop, but you are selling to a business that's trying to make money. It's like if you right. were to sell comic to a comic book it's store. Like not only do not they have to uh, like give you money and then also like ship and like stuff like that, pay people, right. keep lights on, all that stuff. They also have to make a profit. So yeah, they're yeah. going to always cut like a little bit out of like the profit margin right. or sometimes but a that's lot. Where, uh... But, that's where the good part is where you can get the plus like 35 percent of in-store because i'm you know i'm gonna, gonna buy hero clicks no yeah, matter what that's so the thing. Like, if you're that's the yeah, nice part if you're already selling to them you take the the in-store credit and like i've done that and yeah it works out really well because i'm always going to end up buying either singles or sealed stuff again anyhow so it just ends up adding up and uh being like a decent little thing but yeah i'll say a lot of generics usually, like as far as like hero clicks, commons, and uncommons go, generics usually hold their value better than your average like Iron Man or Thor common or whatever. So, like if you have, I don't know, uh, with the rare exception of like Oni Hulk from What If, um, like if you have a bunch of gunslingers and Templars, they'll probably still be worth like about like fifty cents even though they're rotated or something. Um, whereas your average, like, common and uncommon is almost completely worthless at that point. Like, there's almost no use for... Let me think of a figure. Oliver Queen Templar. There's almost no use for him. Yeah, sadly. He's... Oh, poor boy. Poor boy. If his trait was more consistent or if it ever pulled off, I mean, maybe if you can play him in Halloween, if they let you play Mysticals and Monsters and all that stuff. And yeah, but... Yeah, it's it's a shame. And that is uh that are those are all the questions that we have this week on this episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks. And we just I wanna say, like I said, shout out earlier about joining the Patreon. If you do want to see the uh what's it called? Pitch meeting video, that's on our YouTube channel if you want to see all sorts of fun skit videos. Uploaded two whole skit videos in the month of February. Whoa, the world, the sky is falling crazy we making content uh, as well as weekly gameplay videos from my local venue and other places of course that's also you can find the podcast is also on youtube but if you want to give us support and of course unboxing videos which are also uploaded this week um, if you want to support us on our youtube channel you can do so by subscribing liking the videos commenting all that jazz if you want to support us financially you can do so on patreon if you want to send us an email 
do so dial h for hero clicks at gmail.com or like malcolm facebook message us any questions you have if you join our patreon you can do so on the discord uh etc etc so uh those are all just the different avenues you know follow us on twitter all that good stuff uh that you can support the show that is all i have to say simeon you had a special message uh i believe yeah so this is a you know somewhat thread dead but not really uh so writing high on wwe wave 2 dial and evidence thread this is page 37 of 39 we're almost two years into the wait and so roderick cliche here uh has a a pretty pretty decent message that i wanted to read uh and it goes to any whiz kid employee who might read this thread hello we at this thread on HC Realms website love two things, apparently, Heroclix and WWE, and in its many incar- incarnations over the years. As a Heroclix player and judge since Cosmic Justice, I myself have seen a great many wonderful set releases and have fond memories of this game in many ways. In fact, I'm going to make some more fond memories, I hope, tonight when I play War of the Realms pre-release at my local venue. However, I do have something I feel needs said in relation to this particular licensed property. This thread began over two years past. I, myself, in good faith, put down a pre-sale order for an entire set lineup, minus the starter, wasn't known of at the time, in March of 2020. I frantically expected to set to meet its original release date in June 2020, mere days before my wedding. I was worried about shipping a massive clicks roster to my parents' house after I'd already moved out, having to go back and get everything else I was moving, or everything else I was having to pull over to my new residence. Here I am 23 months distant from the initial purchase and 20 months from those frenzied jitters, and I and the rest of those who have not given up complete hope in this set's release still wait. Uh, I am also one of those people that pre-ordered like way, way, way long ago. Uh, Continued. The lack of a release of the set could mean several facts, which could all coincide to varying degrees. One, the COVID-19 epidemic hit WizKids especially hard, as evidenced by many shifting release dates for Heroclix purchases and risking rising costs associated with plastic cost increased and shipping cost increases. These are perfectly understandable facts. It could be, or two, it could be that WWE's ongoing public concerns with various wrestlers over past injuries and lawsuits, as well as their moving to rival companies, could have impact on the set list as WWE works out what to do next with the game license, if anything. That's perfectly understandable. As a company, they have an image to carefully maintain, and they can choose all can choose to release all, some, or none of this product as they wish in order to maintain it. That, too, is perfectly understandable. Three, there are blank solicits through 2026 listed. This year is especially packed with Marvel properties, yet we know other properties exist in-game, and we have seen evidence of potential convention exclusives unreleased. There have been mention of a clear John Cena figure and an image of an awesome Sting figurine. However, none of this has surfaced, nor has word of it. Again, this could be a matter of un- a matter related to the first listed point above, and this is perfectly understandable as well. What is not understandable, sadly, is the lack of communication as to whether any of this is still on the table at all. This could be the result of a non-disclosure agreement with the WWE. That is acceptable and understandable, but in the absence of an official muffling of communication from the WWE, your fans in this particular arena would dearly love to know something at all. We are in, in a time when money is tight, venues are not open or are closing down for hero clicks for good, and players are trying to figure out where to best to put their potentially very limited disposal income. Right now, that $139 I promised on a pre-sale two years ago is looking very promising. I feel as if I am in a similar position to when I was at the closing of NCSoft's superhero MMO City of Heroes some years ago. The closing of the game saw me getting a $200 refund from the company for months of membership I'd paid it for in advance. And I could theoretically get back either my $139 for the WWE figures 
in cash or credit or likely voucher. But is that what I really wanted? In the absence of WWE Hero Clicks that I have desperately wanted for the last two years, with big names I'd love to see on tabletop, the money would be very nice, yes. But it's not necessarily what I want. What I and many others, at least in this neck of the HC realms, want, all we want, is a brief, clear communication if it is allowed. A simple post of a figure image or on a solicit media with a hashtag of not pinned yet would light up the WWE Heroclix fans in a positive and thrilled frenzy, potentially, or a brief article simply stating that you are allowed by the WWE to state that there are concerns regarding the set's release that you cannot disclose in detail, but more information might be coming later as you are allowed to release it would suffice. A similar statement of, we can say that we can release a portion of this product, but due to licensor concerns, we cannot release it in its entirety at this time. Please watch our website and social media presence for possible updates when we are permitted to give them in the future would suffice. As an English teacher, I value clear, careful communication with my students, colleagues, and administrative administration superiors. As a Heroclix player, I weathered watching players insult WizKids years ago when the motto for an anniversary year was expect anything. I ask that you communicate what you can so that you can so that we can even have expectations of any sort other than sour grapes, frustrations, failure from a company that we support dearly and deeply and a bad situation that left colors of perceptions of the company's ability to meet its product listings. If we cannot trust a company to release this one second wave of a product and work out a licensing deal with a company after having done so successfully for a first wave of that product, how can we trust that company to successfully meet any of its customers' concerns in following years on other products? Please do not allow us to sink into that level of misery or to walk away from this WWE ring feeling the loss of being disqualified or pinned. In closing, if there is even no WizKids presence on this forum, given its unofficial status, or on this thread if there is a presence on HC Realms in general, then I fear I have my answer to the begged possibility of communication, and that is disheartening in the extreme. Sincerely, a concerned fam. Concerned fan Roderick cliche of HC Realms. Yeah, I think this is an extremely well said thing, even though I, I did not re- read it extremely well. I will say I think it was extremely well said. Um, and he brought up a point that I hadn't even thought of, which is if we want this game to grow, if we, you know, everyone always likes to say, like, what if we got Power Rangers? What if we got anime? What if we got Naruto? Uh, what if we got XYZ, GI Joe, who knows, whatever. Um, the lack of communication on WWE Heroclix Wave 2, when it's been like almost over two years, is extremely concerning just for the prospect of figures or like new licenses. Uh, you know, obviously we'll probably always have Marvel figures. Uh, but like, you know, we're entering an age where this current year, we don't know if we're going to have a DC set. And that's almost just yeah. as concerning as, you know, yeah. this WWE set not ever being released. Um, did you, um, did you see the, sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah. Uh, so like the thing with DC is because DC, well, there's a lot of things going on with DC, but DC usually gives their artists credit or not credit, but control over characters and character designs and stuff like that. Whereas Marvel owns the characters. So a lot of the reasons why it's harder for WizKids to work with DC, and this is all speculation, you know, obviously um, is because those artists have say in like their figures and their artwork and stuff like that. That's why since I can, remember uh batman animated series at the very least uh, bystander images aren't used unless it's a image of a 3d like hero clicks rendering it's not like comic image like marvel stuff is um but yeah uh that's that's a possibility is that the you know with the state of dc comics and the way that it is hero clicks might not be a dc marvel game anymore it's already been quite skewed so yeah 
that would that would kill the game for so many people. I mean, it probably already does with how little DC or any other property we get. But it, it would absolutely kill the game for some people that don't get any like if, if they stop DC completely. I don't want that. Even as not a DC fan, and nine times out of ten, I've skipped. No, no. Just fact of the matter, I've skipped every DC set except for Wonder <laughs> Woman. You know, like just that's just it. Fact, I guess. Sure. Um, you know. No, I, I still, would still, I would yeah, still, that's a I, huge amount of my hate. player base, uh, yeah. a potential player base too. Um, right. If we could get Watchmen stuff, if we could get you know big DC events like we're getting X of Swords, um, if we could get big DC events again, that brings in like a huge portion of the community. We definitely have fans that are only excited for DC. We have some people that are only excited for Marvel, and then we have people that want like a good combination of the both and uh you know like an even smaller amount of people that don't care whatever like the figure could just be uh like a number like silly putty two and as long as the dial was good they would play it um so those people also exist but we don't talk about right uh we we don't talk about bruno that's from encanto (laughs) Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's been two months since the movie came out. Can we not talk? About I haven't it? seen it, so <laughs> spoiler what alert. Haven't, what do you mean you haven't seen it? It's yet? a good song. That I've it's I watched song. the song. It's oh. on YouTube. It is a, it is a good song? I haven't seen the movie. Um, but yes, uh, I think as far as gameplay goes, it's only healthy to have the most options available, and especially when. DC and Marvel were like the two main game, like main proprietary factors that started this game. I think losing one of those main ones might legitimately like kill the game for, I wouldn't say 50% of like the player base, but I would say like a decent enough player base that you might like lose out on like some venues ever having people again. I mean, that's always like an issue, like venues losing players, but. Yeah. It's a scary thought, like just straight up losing, you know, let's say 15% of the player base when it's already pretty small. Yeah. No, I'm right there with you. 100%. I think all of that was, uh, was well said. So I don't want to leave it off on any other note, except for, of course, a readout. Yeah. So if you want to pre-order your WWE Wave 2, well, guess what? It's still <laughs> available on good old coolstuffinc.com where you can find the latest, greatest, possibly going to be released hero clicks, including all the sealed and singles product. So check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails.